Welcome, guys, to our lesson number two, types of radiation. Now, we have three types of radiation emitted when substances undergo radioactivity. So, we have this type of particles. So, usually, alpha, we have alpha, so these are particles. We have alpha particles. And then we have another uh, radiation which are also particles, call them beta particles, and then we have gamma. Gamma are not particles, but it is form of energy. So this are uh, form of uh, waves, or if you so like, uh, let's call it energy. So the gamma are in form of the energy. So if you look at, for those taking physics, if you look at the electromagnetic spectrum, mark those the, the, the electromagnetic spectrum, you find that gamma uh, rays uh, will be there, the yeah, form of waves or form of energy. So these are the three particles that are emitted by radioactive substances when they undergo radioactivity. Now we are going to look at the properties of each of these particles in details. Let me just project, uh, project them on your screen so that those who like they can make notes with a lot of ease. So let's start with the alpha particles. They are positively charged helium particles represented as HA2 plus sign that is for the helium charge helium particle positive charge of 2 they have an electric uh, charge of positive 2 and they are represented as a helium atom in the nucleus uh, in the nuclear equations for example now what we have here is a nuclear equation where we have a, an element, um, radon, this one here. So it an, uh, emits an alpha particle, so which is this one, H, He24, and then it gives you that. So we will discuss these nuclear equations and their balancing and so forth, but just this to give an example how the alpha is represented. Like here we have the sign for alpha is that, but now when we write the equation, we don't include, uh, we don't use the sign as it is uh, in that case, but we use uh, this one, He, which represents that particle. <clears throat> and that is uh, uh, much more easier, particularly now when it comes to balancing the equations for the nuclear equation, because this ones we don't balance with the atoms, but as we are going to see, we balance using the mass numbers. Another property of the alpha particles is that they are the heaviest of the three particles. They have a mass number of four and atomic number of two. They are affected by both magnetic and electric fields. This I will illustrate together with the following point. They have low penetrating power and they are heavy as we have stated above. They are stopped by a thin sheet of paper. So this one I'll project uh, later on uh, a diagram to show those properties for penetration and deflection in the magnetic and electric fields. So the other properties of uh, alpha. So one uh, is that they have very high ionization power. And this is due to the fact that uh, the particles produce large number of ions as they pass through uh, the gases in air. That is, if the alpha particle is emitted in air, because of its charge, it has a high charge of positive 2, it ionizes particles electrostatically in air as it passes through the air, it ionizes air. And then they have slow speed and high charge. Uh, because of their slow speed and high charge, 
the, this enables the alpha particles to be in contact with the target atoms for longer time, hence greater ionization. So that explains why the alpha particles have very high ionization energy. It is because of uh, their slow speed, the high energy of the particles. So when they pass through the air, and remember the speed is slow, so they cause other particles to be charged. That is what we are calling ionization by simple law of electrostatics. So when a charged particle is scrubbed against the other particle, it's not charged. it causes a charge in that particle, and that is where the ionization comes from. Now let's consider uh, some properties of beta particles. For beta particles, they are negatively charged particles. They exist. They exist in form of electrons and are represented as negative one in nuclear equations, as you can see there, in the nuclear equations. Uh, for example, now what we have here in this uh, reaction, so radioactive carbon emits a beta particle to form, uh, now the, the, the new nuclide formed, we call it the daughter nuclide, so the daughter nuclide, nitrogen 14, so and then that, that is the, this one there, is the electron that is emitted they have an electric charge of negative one. So what is indicated on the sign of the electron here is not the mass of the electron. Electrons, or electrons have a negligible mass. They have negligible mass. So uh, that sign there on the E is just to show the charge, the charge of that particle which is beta particle having a charge of minus one. Then uh, beta particles are lighter than alpha. They have higher ionization, uh, they have higher velocity than alpha because they are lighter, they move faster than alpha. They have negligible, almost no mass. As I've said, the electrons have negligible mass. They are affected by magnetic and electric field because of the negative charge they will be deflected in an electric and in magnetic field so in an electric field they will be deflected to the opposite charge because they are negatively charged they will be attracted to the positive side of an uh, electric plate okay they can be deflected by much weaker magnetic field than the alpha particle due to their negligible mass. In other words, if you look at the angle of deflection, they are deflected at a greater angle because of their light uh, mass or their negligible mass. So they are deflected at much a greater angle compared to the alpha particle. Then they will be deflected towards the positive plate in the electric field, that is what we have explained above there, that in, they are attracted in the opposite uh, direction to the alpha particles, because alpha have a positive charge, these are have, have negative, so they definitely move in the opposite direction. Then they have higher penetrating power due to their negligible mass and the high velocity compared to the alpha. They can pass through a piece of paper, a sheet of paper, but they are stopped by a sheet of aluminium foil. So as we have seen for alpha, alpha they cannot pass through, they cannot penetrate a piece of paper, but a beta can penetrate a piece of paper, but they are stopped by an aluminium foil. And then finally, they have moderate ionizing power and this is because they have negligible mass and travel at relatively higher velocity compared to alpha. So if you compare the ionization power of beta is a bit lower, they are moving very fast, their mass is negligible, and even the charge, they have a charge of negative one while alpha is a charge of positive two. So their charge is relatively lower, speed fast, mass negligible. So their effect of ionization 
ionization on the other particles is a bit low. Now let's consider the gamma rays. So gamma rays, they contain uh, no particle as well as no charge. So these are not particles, but they are form of energy. They are rays. They have no mass. So they are liberated as energy. These are electromagnetic waves, similar to light waves and X-rays, but they have shorter wavelengths. They have very high frequency, i.e. they move, that means they move at very high speed. And then they are unaffected by magnetic and electric field. That means they are not deflected in an electric field and in a magnetic field they will not be deflected. Then they have very high penetrating power due to their short wavelengths and no mass. Then they have very low ionization power and uh, this is due to their lack of charge and the high speed or the high velocity. So they have no charge. So charging other particles um, is zero. And then they are also moving very, very fast. So in a, an equation, in a nuclear equation, they are just usually represented as energy. So let me show you that on the screen. So in nuclear equations, then this is how the gamma are represented on a nuclear equation. So it is so this is the sign for gamma. So in some equations, instead of even the sign, you just see the word energy, it is indicated there. So that energy represents the gamma. As you can see, there is no effect on the atomic number 35, 35 mass number has remained the same. So when they are liberated, they have no effect on the mass number. So the next part, let's just see nuclear equations, their representation, and how each of this particle is uh, represented in nuclear equation though we have uh, partially discussed among the properties but now a little bit in detail just on nuclear equations and just before the nuclear equation let's just see that grammatically the penetration power and the deflection effects of those uh, three particles in electric field and magnetic field as well as the penetration piece of paper and aluminium foil so the penetration power of these three particles is as projected there on the screen. So you find that the alpha particles, so these ones, see their penetration power. So here we have sheet of paper. They cannot go through a piece of paper because their penetration power is very low. And then the next particle is beta particle. You can see it passes through a piece of paper but it is stopped by an aluminium foil and then the gamma rays the gamma rays they penetrate they have very high penetration power they penetrate through a piece of paper pass through or penetrate through an aluminium foil they are only stopped by lead blocks and this explains why radioactive substances are usually stored in lead blocks because lead has the ability to stop all those three types of particles then deflection in an electric field so if this is the source of radiation then as they pass through the electric field so you can see this upper part here we have the the negative part of the electric field and then the lower part we have the positive plate of the electric field so as they pass through since the alpha particles are negatively charged they attract they are positively charged they'll be attracted to the negative plate or the negative side of the electric field. Uh, beta particles, since they are negatively charged, an electron it is attracted to the positive terminal, the positive terminal of the electric field. But gamma, look at the, the gamma rays. Since uh, they have no charge, they pass and are deflected in an electric field and in an, a magnetic field they are not deflected at all because they have no charge so they will not 
uh, be deflected either to the positive or to the negative side. So those are the properties of those particles. So now let's consider um, their representations in nuclear equations. Nuclear equations, just like chemical equations, they need balancing. However, here we don't need to show the state symbols. And another difference that we are going to note with the nuclear equations is that unlike balancing of chemical equations where the number of atoms on the left have to be uh, to equal the number of atoms on the right, we have different types of elements on the reactor side and on the nuclear, I mean on the, on the product side. So in nuclear equations, new elements are formed, unlike in chemical equations where no new elements are formed. And so when balancing here, we usually just balance the mass number and the atomic number. That is the main uh, area that we will concentrate on balancing. So let's uh, take, for example, chemical equations in, uh, involving alpha particles, where alpha uh, particle is involved. So where alpha is involved, remember, alpha, the alpha particle is represented like this, as helium particle. So when alpha is emitted, this one causes decrease, so this one decreases mass number of the parent nuclei by four and atomic number. For example, now in the equation of um, this one for uh, uranium-238, for example, uranium-238 forms thorium by emitting alpha. So, for example, uranium-238. So, this, the, the initial one, this is what we call now the parent. So, this is the parent nuclide. Then it forms theorem. So, uh, in Barrettini, so one helium particle. So, in this case, the mass here, so as we have said, it decreases the, the mass number of the parent by four. So, this is the mass number. So, you minus here four. That gives you 234. And then the atomic number decreases by 2. So that's in this order. Minus 4, minus 2. So 92 minus 2, you get 90. So that will be the representation. Now, this new nuclide form, this is called the daughter nuclide. Daughter nuclide. So this is how. We represent the alpha particle in a chemical reaction. That is how the balance is arrived. Such that 90 plus 2 is 92. 234 plus 4 is 238. The next particle is beta particle. Now, when beta particle is emitted, this one has no effect, beta has no effect on mass number, but increases, it increases the atomic number or the number of protons by one. It increases the atomic number by one. So let's consider um, uh, an, uh, an equation where we have um, the beta particle emitted and uh, this one is uh, for example plutonium uh, 241 plutonium 241 has a mass number of uh, 
form. So when it emits the alpha particle, it forms a radium uh, with a mass number of, um, so as we have said, it does not affect um, the mass number. So it's, uh, it's, in fact, it is two, uh, palladium is 234, sorry, 234. Electron. So to get the mass number here, or to balance this one, so we have said it has no effect, no effect on mass number. So the mass number that means is going to remain the same, 234. But the atomic number, it increases the atomic number by one. So this is going to be plus. So it is going to increase. So from the parent nuclear, the daughter will have the mass number would be, I mean, the atomic number would be more by one, but the mass number is not affected, it remains is the same. Then the other particle is uh, uh, the other radiation, that is gamma, gamma ray. So when gamma is emitted, this one has no effect on both mass number and atomic number. So the gamma ray has no effect on the gamma decay when it is emitted. It has no effect. So it will just be represented as energy, it's emitted as energy, for example. Uh, so it just remains the same, no effect, so the mass number remains 241, atomic number 94, then plus gamma, or you can have as plus energy, either way, plus energy or plus this sign, so for gamma we can have that sign, but for this others we have to represent with the, this either an electron or as helium for the sake of balancing so that when we add up the masses on the right it will be equal to the masses on the left. So similarly 92 minus 1 is 91, 234 plus 0 is 234. So that is how these ones, are, uh, those particles are represented in uh, nuclear equations. Uh, just to take note that the gamma rays can be uh, emitted together with alpha and uh, beta because uh, they don't affect the mass number, they don't affect atomic number, so they can be emitted together in an equation, they'll just be shown as energy, and that will mark the end of our lesson number two. So in lesson number three, we shall discuss the half-life. Thank you.